Hello everybody and welcome to your 26th tutorial on C1 and learning C++ and uh, in this tutorial we're going to be learning about classes. Now I don't know how many uh, tutorials this is going to span but classes are a very broad subject and I know a lot of tutorials that I've read on the internet even when I was learning or like even when I was reviewing or sorry just just watching videos or, or such uh, they they kind of have teach it right they will teach you how to, to work with classes and stuff um and like the CPP file but they won't teach you how to interact with the header file which is a, a big broad area on which you're gonna have to use later on and they don't teach you that and then you're gonna have to end up searching that up yourself and that's a problem they also don't teach you uh um, they don't teach you like in depth um, a lot of other areas and I'm going to be trying to teach you every single area of class that I possibly can um, right um, in these uh, in these new tutorials coming up so anyways uh, the proper syntax for a class is like this first of all there's two different things you can do to define a class you can either call it by class or you can either call it by struct I would advise you to call it by class. Struct is a as a C keyword, and um, class is a, a C plus plus keyword. Uh, the two the difference between the two is that class by default, um, the everything there is private, and instructor instruct everything is by default public. Now. I mentioned private and public and you're like okay what is private and public well have you if you've ever heard of object oriented object oriented programming or you've seen OOP or anything like that on the internet object oriented programming is a is a way it's a style of programming or, or a way you program things to make things easier and you kind of organize things into ways of objects or into real world concepts or real world things right and uh, in order to do that, we have kind of rules. We have some rules for object-oriented design, right? Uh, the three major ones for C++ are encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. So in this tutorial, we're going to be learning a bit of encapsulation. We'll learn more about it later. But um, yeah, encapsulation is deciding whether something should be um, the, the giving it the proper identifier whether something should be private protected public um, anything right the three main ones are private protected and public okay and uh, I don't want to confuse you right but a private type is only a type that can be identified that by that class alone okay and that means um, so if I have a variable in here a private variable uh, therefore that no other class can access that only that class can access that variable and I'll be saying why is that well uh, the reason why we, we love encapsulation we love to keep things private is because we don't want everybody to access everything in the program that's like making a global variable now global variables are bad because uh, um, multiple the, there's a lot of reasons why you probably don't want to make it um, global one reason is that um, multiple classes or functions might use need the same thing and if you make it global you could change some things that an, another function doesn't need change etc etc also if you give people your source code if they have if you have something as private then they know that that shouldn't be a modifiable value or if they modify it they should only modify it in the class itself otherwise if they modify outside the class then therefore um, you might cause a problem or it might be a, a delicate thing that can destroy the whole balance of the program and that's why we have encapsulation and for, for some of you might be saying okay what if I have a private variable or something and I want people in order to change the value but I don't want them to actually see the value uh, we learn about that later on we learn about get and get and set methods that will help us to uh, for people if you only want them to see the values or whatever etc then um you can allow them to do so so that's what private does protected is when we learn the second property of um of object oriented programming is inheritance whenever uh, some a uh, class inherits from another class then the protected uh then only the class itself and anywhere anybody who's um inheriting from the class can use it and the last one's public which means everybody can access those right 
Uh, so f to get into the class design, what we're gonna do is we define a class by saying class and uh, we put a class name. So I'm gonna put player because I'm gonna do it in kind of like a game setting because a lot of people like games. A lot of people like to program games as a hobby or et cetera, et cetera. So I might as well put it in the form of a game, okay? So what does a player have? So we try to split up things into real world objects, okay? So uh, let's look at a player. So a player has, first of all, um, by default, everything is private. But uh, what I like to do is I like to put private there anyways to, to put clear distinction between the two. So to declare an axis, uh, these are like axis modifiers or whatever, you put um, the name of it and you put a colon. And once you do that, then everything below it will become that. And then if you put public, everything below it will be public. Okay. So in the private section, what we're going to do now is we're going to say a player has health. Okay. Uh, they have an attack. Uh, let's say attack power. They have um, defense. Uh, they have experience. And uh, let, let's just leave that for now. Okay. And... Yeah, so let's so see that for now. So uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about adding functions and stuff to classes yet. Oh yeah, and before I forget, the proper term for a function inside a class is called a method. Uh, it's just the difference. Anything that is not uh, pertaining to a class or pertaining to an object of some sort it is considered a function, and uh, anything anything else that's in a class or an object or some of some sort then it is considered a method so we just declared our variables we called it class we our class is a player class now to end off a class we put a semicolon so one thing cool thing about classes is that they're like our data types right so if we have for example when we use integers integers are data type and we have a variable name and we can set it equal to whatever right uh, for classes, uh, it's the same, same thing. So we can say player, players, uh, since our player class, that is the data type, and we can make a variable name uh, equal, um, set it to a variable name. Okay, so our variable name is player1, and we'll have our next one called player2. So you might be saying, okay, yeah, there's a lot of uh, classes are cool because they group everything, but like, uh, what are they useful for? So let, let's look into that, okay? So let me let me set player one's uh, player one as health equal to hundred. So one thing that we need to know is that we need to get familiar with the dot operator. Okay, the dot operator uh, it lets us access um, elements within the uh, within classes or within a container or of some sort, right? So this is the 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 name the dot lets us know that we're gonna be using this is like the object name and this lets us know uh what we're trying to get within the object itself right so anyways if you notice when i say player one dot health what happens uh we get an error because it is private meaning that nobody else can access it right uh so say we wanted to change the health this is what I mean by public, uh, by my method and stuff like that. So uh, let's say we wanted to, uh, yeah, set the health. So we're gonna say like we'll have a variable called set health a function, and uh, we take in a value. Okay. So in that in this function we say that health is equal to value. So instead of calling the variable itself, if we say player dot set health, and then we place a value in there, then it will change the health within the within the player class. So for say you have say you don't want the person to actually read the health, but you want them to really set the health value, then we can do so with the set health method, right? And then we change the variable without actually accessing the variable, okay? So that is um, a lot of what we're going to be doing. So let let's look at this. Um, we say player and we say player two that set health. So if we look at it this way, they're each individual data types, right? So you know how uh, if we if we had for example if we had int and we said int num one and we had num two, right? And I set num one equal to a hundred and I set num two 
equal to 86 right they're both different variable types so think of it the player like this okay we have two different player types player one and we have player two when we call set health it's only changing the health in the player one instance or the player one object and when we call player two set health it's only changing the health in the player two object it's not interchangeable it only changes it within that current object so if i was to call uh so let, let's make a function right here outside the class outside the player class and this is a cool thing about class as well so let's say display health and we're going to take in a player type and we'll just put player right there so we're going to say cl player dot and we should um we should get a, a get function so what we're going to do is we're going to say another function we're going to another method get health and no it should be integer integer type and we'll say return health and you might be saying okay if we have a get and set method what's the point of making health private why not make it public it's just encapsulation that's just the way it is when you this is the proper way to code in c plus plus and you will see later on why it's a good um thing to keep it like so anyways so in here we're going to say player dot get health okay so if I want to display, if I use this display health function, then I can put in player one. So if I put in player one, it should display the value 100. So if you see right here, we get the value 100. Now if I, I can also pass in player two because they're both of the player type, right? So if I pass this in, it says that the value is 86 so just like if we, if this was an integer how we could pass in a value we can pass in a player and then we can pass in a player object and then we can uh, do whatever we need to do with it but I'm going to end the tutorial here since it's been pretty long and we'll continue when we left off in the last tutorial so I hope this wasn't a bit I hope this wasn't too confusing for you and I hope um, practice hard and I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye